Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that. If you're returning, how you doing? Yes, I am not feeling very well. I am uh, a little on the sick side. I keep waking up with a sore throat and so <laughs> it stinks. It really does. Um, I don't know if it's my allergies or what, but I've just been congested for the past few days. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today is uh, what people are seeing and experiencing in everyday life when it comes to being of the prepared mind. And I get um, a lot of like videos and pictures and emails and stuff like that, okay? And if you would like to do so, my email is in the description box below, all right? So this first picture that was said to me, I'm just going to put it up because this is just way too funny and it just it just speaks in volume um, of what priorities are really what really are the priorities of this administration no kidding when especially when it comes to infrastructure now this email was sent to me and um, she said, um, has anyone realized where Keystone meat products come from? I heard about the uh, what's going on with Keystone. Um, I honestly don't buy Keystone products, the canned meat and stuff like that. Um, so uh, I honestly have not, I heard about it, but I have not been keeping up on it. Uh, she said, please pay attention to when your cans were packaged, especially after the derailment. So I have some pictures that I'm going to put up for you, okay? This first picture, I'm going to read it to you really quick and then I'll put it up, okay? It says, established in 1964, Keystone Meats proudly uses the highest quality natural meats sourced from local farms. Keystone Meats are hand-selected, cut and packed in Lima, L-I-M-O, Ohio. And then the second picture shows the how far Lima, Ohio is from Palestine, Ohio, East Palestine, Ohio. It's an hour and 25 minute drive, 75.9 miles away. Okay, here you go. And here are two pictures that were sent in and this community member said Walmart at its best. <laughs> so funny. It's so true. Commercial break. Now here's a video that was sent to me by a community member and this is an awesome speech and this woman absolutely nailed it so I'll just leave it up here for you okay please listen to what this woman has to say because it speaks in volume about what's really going on in our schools. Hello my name is Lindsey Graham and I am a cat meow meow I'm not a woman dressed as a cat I am a cat by show of hands I'm curious uh, how many of you believe and confess that I'm a cat Great. I am, by show of hands, I'm curious how many of you believe that your child or a child from this school would believe that I'm actually a cat? No one. You are right. Why? Because you are not stupid and these children are not stupid. Truth prevails over imagination. Reality exists. Discernment is innate and something we are biologically wired to have. One look at me and you know this to be true. I am a woman posing as a cat. You may also think correctly that if I truly believe I'm a cat, I have a mental disorder. If I suffer from a mental disorder, and if I'm unable to discern reality, am I safe to be around children? Would you put me in charge of making critical decisions about the safety and well-being of children and about the direction of their education when I cannot even discern truth from fiction? Confession, I'm not actually a cat, guys, just because I say I am. You've not agreed to or committed to addressing me as a cat simply because I demand it. No tail, whiskers, or outfit makes me a cat. Just like no lipstick, high heels, or long hair makes him a man, a woman. It is just as biologically impossible for me to become a cat as it is for a man to be a woman. 
and you have one job as members of this school board, and it's defined as this. School board members are responsible for broad, forward-thinking, minute analysis and decisive action in all areas that affect students and staff in their schools. I ask you, do you believe that the actions of a grown man playing dress up as a woman affects the students and staff positively or negatively? A public school is not the place for social experiments in altered realities or gender ideologies. It is not the place to celebrate a grown man with a mental illness, dressing as a woman and teaching kids lies. Children come to school to learn facts and truths about reality, including unchanging biological truths about science and nature, not to learn that they can change biological realities and become anything they want in the name of diversity. What you're actually doing is worse than just lying to our kids. You're forcing them to be participants in your lie, in your charade. Now, a community member sent in some pictures and a video. She said she incubated some of her chicken eggs for the first time, currently hatching new biddies. She said she bought some chicks from a local farm supply last year. This year, I am providing my own chicks. Still have some hatching and drying in the incubator. Bought a used incubator from the produce manager at one of the local groceries for $20. I paid for it. It's paid for itself now. Uh, also recently bought nine more metal shelf units from a restaurant that is closing. Got them and also metal utility cart for $200. I've already filled all of my other shelf units. Need more for my canning jars. Got a deal on these two food choppers too for $20, for $20 each will come in handy for cutting produce. I've currently got a lot of potatoes and onions to cut up, even found another Excalibur dehydrator. Now I can run three at a time when I'm dehydrating a lot at once, rather than having to do it over multiple days. Thank you. These are amazing. I love it. Now here's a video that was sent in by a community member of another derailment in Sandstone, West Virginia. Here's an email from a community member who lives in the UK. He said, please get this done as soon as possible. Houses will have utilities disconnected due to regulations of health and safety standards and breaching net carbon standards. Forced to eviction and sent to temporary camp for re relocation for processing. You will have only limited possessions to take. Preppers will lose supplies then rehoused later to smart properties with legal building certification, environmental certifica certified habitable 15 minute cities. These properties will all have rented utilities like refrigerators, cookers, televisions, etc., etc. Your carbon credits won't allow you to buy them outright, just rented via credit system weekly, just uh, it's cost adjust by your income capacity. Any property urban that doesn't have uh, utilities connected will be deemed condemned uninhabitable by law and date of eviction and demolition will be declared. This is how they get you into camps and then into 15 minute cities by law. Those lucky to fit criteria they have will be moved first into 15 minute zones. Hence the building regulations in regard to smart and carbon regulations. Here is how they do it. If your area has no amenities or your home, FEMA can force you 
and your family in eviction on grounds of health and safety. Keeping you updated. Thank you so much. This is just terrible, but this is how they're doing it. Stinks. Stinks to high heaven. So here's an email from a community member. She said, you have a platform and a voice, you are a patriot, and you have a senator in your state who cares. I wish I could say the same. I'm putting together my list of numbers to call. The question for our politicians, what the hell are you going to do about the two illegal immigrants with a truck of fuel and guns that killed an eagle in Nebraska? That is a federal offense that you and I would be prosecuted for. Patera actually said bullshite yesterday, which is pretty strong language for her. Yeah, I know it is. She said, anyway, you can encourage your followers to make as many calls to every government official that they can to get a number for both local and federal to ask what's being done. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. You know, th this is, you know, this is, and you're right, nothing it will ever be done to them. You know, I know, like, okay, what happened with me uh, on New Year's Eve uh, when two illegals, uh, drunk driving, drove into my house with their car and nothing happened to them, nothing. They totaled my car, they drove into my, literally my house and they walked away with a careless driving ticket. Nothing happened to them and nothing will ever be you know if we would have done something like that we would have been locked up and everything else they walked away with a careless driving ticket and then the same thing's going to happen to them nothing will have it's like almost like they have more rights than we do and why i could go on a rampage about this i could go on and rant and rave and everything else and it's not going to do any good it's really not Nothing is ever going to change in this country until this administration changes. And even still, even then, it's going to take years to fix this broken, broken system. It is so broken here. It is so broken. And it stinks. There is so much destruction. We are at WAR, and I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody says. I know. I can see it. I can smell it. And I know that all of you can as well. Okay. So on to this email from a community member. She said, I wanted to let you know that they are evacuating residents near the river in Newman. She's in California, which is about 10 minutes from me since they flooded last time. They are also telling us to be ready in case we need to evacuate. And if our power goes out because it's supposed to be worse than last time, our streets flooded next block over from me last time. I'm worried about our, if our power goes out, I have no way to keep our fridge and our deep freezer running. I've been stocking, uh, 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 stocking up with every penny that I have. I've recycled every two weeks to buy more food. Honestly, this isn't helping with my anxiety just even thinking about this. Sweetie, if I had answers, oh my gosh, if I had solutions, believe me, <laughs> believe me, I would be the first one to give them to you. So here's another email from a community member. She said, today in our monthly Tennessee Utilities Magazine, there are articles about utility outage preparedness and a separate article warning citizens to stay away from substations. I wonder if this was published nationwide or just our state. I didn't see anything in Florida. Commercial break. So here's a picture that I'm going to put up for you that was sent to me by a community member. And this is on a Survival Preppers uh, Facebook page. It's the International GPS Jamming Test for the Dates and Times and Locations. Uh, it's for Utah Test and Training Range, March 13th through the 23rd. Uh, so if you want, uh, uh, pause the video so you can read it. Okay, here you go.
And before I go, here's an email that came in from a community member, and he said, in light of the train derailments and other things that are contaminating the soil, I've been stocking up on bags of topsoil. Clean soil may be hard to find soon, so I suggest buying some now if you don't have some already. Plus, this may actually come in, become a bartable item someday. Then, as far as potential dollar crash goes, I've been saving money at home in the form of nickels and pennies. I know Trish also suggested saving change a while back. Yes, she did. Uh, a common nickel is currently worth six cents based on the 25% nickel, 75% copper content. Also, copper pennies are worth about three cents each right now, and the new copper plated zinc ones are still worth about eight eight tenths of a cent each so if the paper currency becomes worthless these would still have value because of their metal content uh, this would be something most folks should save if uh, even if acquiring gold and silver are out of reach financially thank you so much for this information this is very valuable information all right guys i'm out of here all right you stay safe you stay positive you keep prepping and as always fearless ciao